Okay, well, welcome everybody. It's nice to see you all here today. Uh, we have a nice, nice gathering of 20 some people. Um, I was telling our speakers that we actually had like 105 registered, but I know a lot of people who can't make it live. Um, they view it at other times. So I'm happy, however, you're able to see this. My name is Sharon Chayden Glass. I am an instructional media designer for Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. And before that, I taught English to international students in higher education. And I have two wonderful guest speakers today. I have Jess Lighthall and Hannah Radent. I actually didn't ask you if that's how you say your last name. Is it Radin or Rat? How do you say your it's last name? It's Radant. And I actually Redan. say my first name, Hana. So. Oh, Hana. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Hana, Hana Radin. I didn't Hana get it. Right. Hana Radant. Yeah. Radant. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Syllable stress on the second <laughs> syllable. Radant. Okay. Perfect. Um, and they're going to share their stories with us tonight about how they got into the field that they're in now. Um, Hana, do you want to start? Um, so I'm currently an alert in learning and development. I'm a learning and development specialist, but I started out um, in K through 12 education. I spent about 15 years in there as a special education teacher. Um, I was in a range of different positions. So I taught at the elementary level, at the high school level, in a resource room setting, in, um, in like a self-contained school and charter school. So I kind of saw a lot of different environments in education. And then I spent my last year as a lead teacher. So I was out of the classroom and in charge of probably about 15 teachers and paperwork review and things like that. So, um, and then Sharon, should I talk about what I did to transition as well as my background? Yeah. Yeah. Usually people want like to hear about, um, you know, how, how long was your process? How many, mm -hmm. how many months did you do it? How many interviews did you go on? Stuff like that. Sure. Um, I guess I got my start in the teaching a path to L and D group, which probably a lot of people have heard of, but Sarah has a great group with lots of resources in there. So I watched a lot of her videos and met with some of the mentors that offered their time, which was really helpful to me to talk over like what would be the best path for getting more learning and upskilling. Um, so I met with them. I did a lot of LinkedIn learning. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, and then in that process, revamped my resume and LinkedIn profile to ID lang language. Um, and I started my portfolio. A lot of it had some of the things that I had done as a teacher to start out off with. But then as I continued on with, I joined an academy and did projects through that. So then I would replace things and um, just learned more about how to talk about what I was doing and describe what my projects were meant for in my portfolio. So it was just kind of like a slow upskill. Um, I started an academy in January and then I was kind of aiming to be done in that, in that summer and hopefully get an ID job and had started the interview process um, then. But I ended up taking the lead teacher position at my school district and felt like I could learn and gain some skills through that. So it was kind of a longer process for me. Um, I ended up getting a referral for a contract position at my current company now. So that allowed me the opportunity to practice skills and gain some experience with mentorship. And, and so then as I was contracting with them through my job the next year, it, it turned into a conversation about whether I would want to work for them full time when my school year was over. So that's kind of like how I hopped into that position. So I really didn't, I did a lot of interviewing at the beginning, but not as much in that year when I was contracting and teaching. That sounds like a pretty ideal um, transition because you got to, you, you kind of got to test out the waters before you jumped all the way in to kind of see if it was something that you like to do. Yeah, it was it was really it was really nice because I got to see how things worked at a company kind of behind the scenes. I was working in 
different storyline files. So I was gaining skills that way too. Plus they're really good about mentoring people and helping them along the way. So there was a lot of like back and forth and feedback given too. So that was helpful. All right. Um, I'm going to give it over to Jess. Ready for you, Jess? All right, perfect. Um, my name is Jess and my current position is I'm a training specialist, um, which it's really a lot of what I would call instructional design work. Um, and I can talk a little bit more, maybe even in the breakout session about kind of my day to day. Um, but in terms of my journey here, so I taught high school English for 13 and a half years, um, all levels, all kinds of English classes from, you know, college English, um, journalism, technical writing, literature classes. And honestly, I had kind of wanted to leave the classroom for probably about five or six years. And I initially was sort of looking, just kind of randomly applying. I kind of liken it to sort of like throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. And it wasn't a very effective way of doing anything. Um, I would say I first heard about instructional design as a career probably about four years ago. And it was something that piqued my interest at the time and sounded like something I was, I would want to do. Um, I didn't really pursue it. Then the pandemic happened and it was so, you know, it was just kind of all consuming. <laughs> I'm sure as all of you know, just to be able to, you know, transition to remote learning and some weird hybrid teaching and all of that. So I kind of put my career transition on the back burner. And then last November, so almost a year now, um, I kind of decided like, I want to do this. I want to do it the right way um, and be more effective in my career search. So I actually started out by um, going to and purchasing the Teacher Career Coach course. It's um, a program by Daphne Gomez. Um, she does have a lot of free resources like podcasts and free resources on her website. She does also offer a, a paid course. It's not geared just to learning and development, but it's more geared to trend, like teachers transitioning, how to rewrite your resume, your cover letter, how to interview, negotiate salary, all those things. Um, so I got started there. And I also did the LinkedIn learning coursework on instructional design. Um, I did the pathway, like becoming an ID, and then also took other classes. Um, I, Devlin Peck is one of the YouTube channels that I watched a lot of videos of his, um, as well as Tim Slade. TPLD is also a group that it was super helpful to like get feedback on assets once I did make and create things uh, to post it in there. And they gave great feedback. Um, and so that was probably November, December. I was working on all of that. I, over my winter break, had decided to start applying for jobs. Um, I did not have my portfolio done yet. <laughs> it was something that I was still kind of going to be working on. I was storyboarding some courses, getting ready to build some courses, but I hadn't put anything together yet. And so I actually applied for the job I have now um, on a Friday afternoon. And about two hours later, the recruiter reached out by email to do a phone screening. So um, basically the way that, that my job is, um, so I'm a training specialist at Caterpillar, company probably most people have heard of, um, through a staffing agency called Tech Systems. And so I work on a long-term renewable contract with the opportunity to also be hired internally by Caterpillar. Um, and so it is a way that a lot of these big companies that, that people get into these big companies with internal positions. Um, a lot of people on my team started as what they call agency positions and then were converted to internal. So um, that is also a possibility. And I can answer more questions about that if, if anyone's interested. But um, so I, I work on a team with um, other training specialists. Um, we have knowledge specialists and also some quality analysts. And uh, just kind of in a nutshell, what I do on a daily basis is um, create and design uh, instructor-led training. And I don't facilitate the training, but I create it 
And um, then we'll do like a virtual train the trainer session. And then our trainers will go and actually facilitate those. So I would say about 95% of my job is the creation of learning materials. And about 5% is the training of the trainers. Um, so I, I did not have to have a portfolio for my job. I did end up making a portfolio and learning articulate and and all of that just because I wanted to for my own benefit and for potential, you know, future jobs or moving up within the company to other jobs. Um, but I design exclusively in PowerPoint and using Microsoft, um, other Microsoft Office tools. Um, so, you know, one thing when people will kind of ask me about, you know, what tools should I learn? I always say, you know, well, you know, a lot of places do use Articulate. So I'm not telling people not to learn it, but you'd never really know what tools the job is going to require until you get into it. And I did not need that for mine. Um, so it was actually a pretty quick process for me. I was offered the position in January. I did resign mid-year and I started my job last February. So I've been there almost eight months now. So any regrets? None at all. It's the best decision. It's the best decision, honestly, that I've ever made for myself. I'm so happy that I made that choice. <laughs> Excellent. I have a question in the chat from Gabby. Do you know some reputable agencies that can help people find those contract roles? Um, either Jess or uh, Hana. I've been contacted by Experius a lot, but their positions tend not to match my needs and or location. I'll say I've had a great experience with tech systems. I know they do hire for a lot of technical um, positions, but not, not necessarily exclusively. Um, I haven't personally had any um, experience with any other staffing agencies. Um, I know that I think Robert Half is one that I've seen on LinkedIn quite a bit, but I don't have any personal experience with them to recommend them or not. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I've had great experience with tech systems. So T -E is that it's T E K. Okay. Systems. Yep. <laughs> I think my husband's been working through them actually. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> I to answer for me, I don't I don't know any agencies. I I know some people have gotten work through Upwork and that's contract for like different different things. Um but I also think it helped me to get contracts just by networking and visiting with the mentors and being a part of the community with the academy that's like how I got a referral to my current company and then even after that I had another person reach out to say are you looking for contract work so the more connections you make sometimes people just throw out like somebody contacted me about this job and it doesn't work for me so um that I've seen jobs like contract work come through that way too All right. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and pause here and let's get those breakout rooms going. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Uh, the next time that we will have another one of these sessions will be Tuesday, December 6th, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. And I will drop the um, registration link to that in the chat for you. Christy says mine is supposed to be waiting in bed, but uh, it's supposed to be in bed, but waiting quietly for me on the steps. <laughs> Just like it's like anything to be with you, mom. I'm like, I'm I know someday I will miss that. But right now, you know, I probably heard my name 80 times in an hour at dinner. Mom, mom. Hey, mom, mom. Hey, mom, mom. I'm talking to mom. Let me talk to mom. Ah, kids are funny. All right, so December 6th is the, is the next time that we'll be meeting. And I I think that's all I have to tell you right now. We, I mean, pretty much we're meeting same first Tuesday every month. So if you're planning ahead, January 3rd will be January and February 7th will be the next one. Um, will I send email reminders if we've already attended this session? The way to do that is um, get on this email uh, listserv and I'll put a link to that in the chat. And um, I, for each session, I um, send out um, an invitation 
to register for upcoming sessions through this listserv, my um, MailChimp listserv. That's the best way. Um, so let's just open it up for questions. What questions do you have? Feel free to unmute yourself, or if you want to put it in the chat, that's fine with me. Um, I guess for the people who've already transitioned, what are some of the less, oh, hi, I get to do the big, the big person in the middle. Um, <laughs> what are some of the more unexpected job titles you've seen that are like actually instructional designer without saying it? Because for instance, I've seen i've been on a bunch of listservs and seen something like operations specialist hmm. and they're actually doing a lot of instructional design type work does that make sense what are some of the job titles that yeah. you see in your job search yeah that are instructional design related but that you might not expect training specialist which is what jess is doing was a surprise to me i'm like oh that's a thing um Training coordinator is sometimes what they're called. Instructional systems designer is another one. That tends to be the term that you see for government work. I don't know why they like that term more. Sounds very engineering. I don't know. Um, Hannah or Jess, any that come to mind for you? Just kind of, I'm glad you asked that question because one thing I was going to say was um, that I just highly advise like reading the job postings because, like you pointed out, there's so many different titles. Um, like learning experience designer is another one that I know a lot of people have, uh, where it's instructional design work. Um, when I hear the title trainer or something with training, a lot of times you think facilitator, but like, you know, with mine, um, it's very, very little facilitation and mostly design work. So I think just, yeah, so many different companies call this work something different, um, which can be difficult to figure out. So just reading those, those job titles or job postings to really kind of get at the heart at you know, what is this role going to be? What is it going to entail? You know, how much of it is going to be actually designing learning and how much of it is, you know, facilitating or something else. Or as someone mentioned earlier, is it end to end? Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. you're the only person in the whole company doing everything. We had someone on, um, I can't remember when, but she was doing it for the whole company. Um, I also see a question here. Uh, how many applications did you send out versus how many interviews did you get? For me, it was about 40 applications. I had two interviews and I landed one job. Um, Jess and Hannah? I had, I sent out three applications and had one interview and one offer. It moved very quickly. Nice. It's it's not <laughs> indicative yeah. of a lot of the, <laughs> most people's mm -hmm. process. And I kind of went into it with the breakout um, room I was in. I think it was just like the right position for me came open at the right time. <laughs> so I think a lot of it ends up being timing. Um, yeah, it was very, very quick for me. And I didn't send out all that many applications. Yeah. Mine was about six months total. And Hannah, you had more of like a mentoring. Yeah. Deal and I was going to say mine went in spurts. I think I probably sent out about as many as you probably 40 but it'd be like 10 here and then mm -hmm. you know I did a first round of interviews where I wasn't feeling very confident and probably had a couple interviews with recruiters and didn't make it past like the first round and then um, as I gained more experience I, I still I wasn't sure when I started my contract role that that would turn into full-time so I would sent out applications later on too so mm -hmm. yeah Oh, I was going to add to the job yeah. title thing too, like depending on what you're interested in, like customer success manager or LMS manager yes. or technology specialist are also different titles. So if you're interested in just kind of working behind the scenes, then LMS manager or technology specialist or something like that might be more up your alley than yeah. more of a traditional instructional design role. Where Christy is saying that she's on the seventh round of the interview process and a company 
with a company that has spanned a month. That sounds like hell. And that sounds like nobody is given the power to make a decision is what it sounds like. I would, good luck. Hope it goes well. What what do they ask at round seven? <laughs> that four interviews is a lot. I don't know. I feel kind of like after th two, three is kind of like the upper threshold, I think. It, it wasn't until um, round four that I was even told um, that there was actually 20% travel involved when up through the other rounds, no one had mentioned that. I had asked about day to day. I'm I'm a little overwhelmed by it, but yeah, round it. seven at this point, and I just did the presentation. So I actually didn't even find out who the hiring manager would be until round six. Sweet Lord. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I had uh, some, a family member say, like, who has the time for this? I'm like, apparently they do. Um, Becca says, I've heard that LMS admin has more technical requirements. Is that accurate? Do you know what upskilling one would need to do to be competitive for that role. I don't do LA learning management system administration. I'm guessing some coding is involved. Does I've heard that the, the back end of Canvas requires some coding. Not a lot. It's like HTML, which is not hard. Mm -hmm. um, HTML just uses plain English mostly. It's like you're telling it, this is how wide things are. And this is how long they are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. However, the Canvas, uh, I looked because I have been looking into the higher ed space and like certifications in Canvas are unfortunately really expensive if you're trying to do them independently. Mm. So. Uh, we have just a couple minutes left. Any more questions? I think we're, do you think we're done? I think we're good for the night. Sounds like we're good for the night. Excellent. All right. Well, I hope to see you back here um, December 6th. Um, Hannah and Jess, thank you so much for coming and sharing your expertise and your experience and congratulations on your jobs. It's such a great, it's so great to know that people have made that um, leap over and are happier for it. So. I hope I see you all in a month and be well and happy Thanksgiving. And we're only a couple weeks away from Christmas. Hold on. It's going to be crazy. Have a good night, all. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you.